Hi, Foxies. Okay, so today we are gonna do a super easy assignment and sad day. I thought I like recorded this entire lesson and my phone like decided it didn't have any memory and so then I, um, so then I like did this whole lesson like just for funsies, but it's okay because now like I'm a pro, we're ready for it. Okay, so um, there are gonna be some times when um, I'm gonna say like maybe now's a good time to pause just so that everyone can get everything in their math journal. So um, I'm just gonna start with, so today's objective and what we're working on. So we're doing 13.1 and 13.7, um, and I can summarize and describe data distributions. So that's what we're doing is we're gonna be looking at data um, and histograms and dot plots and figuring out um, like the best way to describe them in the different parts of them, and it's gonna be super easy. Um, so you're gonna glue in your blue paper. Okay, so you're gonna glue in your blue paper, um, and then, so that way like it won't poke out the edge and like get ripped, but here's mine. Um, I already have it highlighted because, huh, turns out I already did this lesson once. Um, let's see here. So I'm going to like kind of push this up so that way um, I'm going to come over and look at what you can see. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to push this up so that way you guys can fill in um, this data. Um, I am not going to like talk you through it. I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to see it, I hope. Um, okay, I'm just going to like briefly go through it. Okay, so um, our first one is fish caught, and like it's increments of one to ten. There are three in the one, there are two in the two, um, two in the three, and then four in the four, nothing from five through nine, and then one in ten. Okay, um, and then for pets per home, um, we have um, a histogram here. It goes from one to nine, um, and then like my frequency, I go up through six, but really I only make it up to four. Um, so for one, there's one, for two, there's four, for three, there's two, for four, there's one, none for five, one for six, two for seven, four for eight, and then one for nine. Um, if you want to pause this and um, get the data copied down into your math journals, that would be a great time to do it. Okay, I'm just going to pretend like we paused. I don't know if that's what we did or not, but that's what I'm going to pretend. Um, and then at the bottom, um, there's some information um, that there's some information that you're going to want to write down as well. So it's kind of like a little bit of a chart. They're all my smudges because I already started writing in it. Um, so in one column, there's going to be fish. And then in another column, there's going to be pets. Um, and then the words off to the side that we're going to fill in are clusters, um, gaps, peaks, and then describe. Um, and I, we're going to go back and fill that in. Okay, so if you want to pause to get this in there as well, like now's a great time to do that. Um, and then I'm going to just jump into the lesson in just like a couple seconds. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with some vocabulary first. Okay, so our first word up here is cluster, and I'm going to show you what a cluster looks like. So a cluster, it's a group of data points that lie within a small interval. So um, I have a cluster from one to four. This is a cluster right here. Um, actually, let me scoop this back up. Whee. Okay, so I have a cluster from one to four. Um, then 10 really isn't a cluster. What's 10 called? I hope you were thinking an outlier because that's what it's called as an outlier. Um, and then um, in my pets per home, I have two clusters here. Uh, one cluster is from one to four, and then one is from six to eight. So it's just a group of data that's like clustered together, okay? Um, my next word is gap, and a gap is exactly what it sounds like. So a gap, it's an interval that has no data. So from five to nine, there's no data here. Um, and then my histogram, um, where's my gap in my histogram? Like, where would you see it between what numbers and what numbers? I hope you're thinking five, because that's where my gap is. There's no data there. Um, so gap, that's really easy to define. Um, my next vocabulary word is peak, and this is also like pretty much self-explanatory. So a peak, it's the highest point um, in your data. So for fish cop, where is my highest point? I hope you were thinking four. Um, because that's where my peak is at. It's like the most data. It's the highest um, part of your data. And then for pets per home, where is my peak here? Um, a peak, it's similar to mode. Like you can have more than one mode or you don't have to have any modes. Um, same with peaks. Like you can have more than one peak um, or you can have just one peak or if you have no data, then you have no peak. 
So here I have two peaks. Um, I hope that as you're looking at it, you're like, oh, there's a peak at two because that's one of my highest places and then a peak at eight because that's my other highest place. Um, so um, those are our vocabulary words, like super, super easy. Um, we're gonna go through and just label them um, down at the bottom because we've already kind of gone over them. So um, my clusters, like in my fish example, I have a clusters um, from one to four. And then in my histogram, um, I have clusters from one to four again, and then I also have clusters from six to nine. Um, so I have two sets of clusters here, so make sure that in your assignment you're identifying it if you do. Um, and then for gaps, um, we already decided that I have gaps from five to nine um, in my fish that were caught. Notice that my gap starts at five and goes to nine, like where I have no data. It's not from four to 10 because I have data both at four and 10. So it's from five to nine, okay? Um, and then, let's see here. Um, so I have a gap at five on my histogram. Hopefully you were able to like remember that and see it. Um, and then peaks, so um, I have one peak on my fish liver comp and my peak is at four. That's where my highest piece of data is. And then I have two peaks on my histogram and so my first peak is at two and then my second peak is at eight. Okay, um, so then where it says describe, um, you're gonna be asked to like describe data. Um, and when you are describing your data, dun, 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 I want you to describe your data using these things right here, okay? So, um, scoot this back again. Okay, I'm making sure we're still recording. Good deal. All right, is it going? Oh, it's totally going, sorry. I don't wanna have to redo it again. Okay, all right, so when you're describing your data, um, if I'm gonna describe fish that were caught, you should be using these words right here. So you should be using the words like increase and decrease. Um, equal, more, less, that's similar to increase and decrease, outlier peak, symmetry, um, cluster and gap. Oh my gosh, and I just realized that I didn't do symmetry. I'm gonna back up to symmetry so that way I can explain it to you. Um, symmetry, let me grab my paper. Ah, oh, authentic Mrs. Fox lesson. Okay, so symmetry, it's when it's equal um, on both sides. So I have this piece of paper here and I'm going to make a line of symmetry by folding it in half. That was amazing, right? And then you get to like watch my awesome cutting skills. I'm like cutting, I don't know, like a butterfly or something. And that look, it looks so pretty. Okay, so here is my paper. Um, and if I created, um, so this fold is my line of symmetry. And I open it up and this is what symmetry is. It's when it's the same on both sides. Um, so it's the same on both sides. You can, like, hopefully you can see that. Um, so in your data today, um, you're gonna be looking for symmetry. You're gonna be looking for symmetry. And if you guys look at our histogram, so our histogram like has a very nice job of what symmetry looks like. Um, in our dot plot for fish that were caught, there's no symmetry here. Um, you can't see anything that's like, um, like if you fold it in half, it's the same on both sides. Um, here on Pets for Home, there is symmetry. Um, sometimes you'll notice like some symmetry, like and there will be parts of it that are the, where you notice symmetry, and then there will be parts where you don't, um, where like it's a little bit different. So you can say, you can clarify and say, I see symmetry in this part and this part, but this part is where it gets different. Um, you'll see what I mean in the assignment, okay? Um, okay, so let's go back to describing data. Okay, so when you are describing your data, um, you want to use these words up here, so increase, decrease, um, equal, more or less, outlier, peak, symmetry, cluster, gap. Um, so if I were to describe fish that were being caught, I could say things like, um, going from three to four, there was an increase in my data. Um, going from four to five, there was a decrease. That same with more and less. Um, so like from one, there were less people from one to two in my data. Um, more people from three to four. Um, let's see here, equal. Um, two and three has an equal amount of um, data. Um, outlier, you guys know what an outlier is. 10 is my outlier in this set of data. Um, when I describe what my peak is, I can say, oh, well, in my fish caught dot plot, uh, my peak is four, like with um, four pieces of data because that's like the highest number. So that's my peak. 
Um, there is no symmetry in fish caught, but there is symmetry in pets per home. Um, you can identify where your clusters are. I have a cluster from one to four, and then where your gap is, I have a gap from five to nine. And so really all you're doing um, when you're describing your data is just saying what, or writing down what you see. Um, I do have a couple of rules when it comes to um, describing your data. Maybe I dropped my pencil. Here we go. Oh. Okay. Um, when you're describing your data, um, I'm asking for three things. Um, the first thing that I would like you to do um, is use complete sentences. Um, the second thing that I would like you to do um, is use your math journal. And when I say use your math journal, I mean please use um, these words right here to help you with it. Um, and then finally, you need to have at least three sentences. So you're describing at least um, three different things, okay? Um, but that's all that we're doing today. Oh good, it's still recording. Okay, so that's all that we're doing today. Um, it's gonna, your assignment is gonna be 13.1 and 13.7, they're on opposite sides of your chapter, but um, it, it's okay. Like, it's the same thing, you're gonna do awesome at it. Um, you are going to be allowed to work with a partner, just because we're not gonna have like very much practice with this. Um, you will be allowed to work with a partner. Please make sure you're using a whispering voice. Don't get loud and crazy pants because I know sometimes you like to do that, but don't. Um, and um, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. Um, if you guys have questions, um, check your math journal or I'll be back tomorrow and we can talk about it tomorrow. But you guys are going to rock this assignment. Keep doing like awesome things. Be really good today. I miss your faces already.